Your man wrote about the long-legged fly upon the stream, did he not? said the traveller to the woman as she fished in the clear water. They had talked little but poetry in the ten minutes since he had come by. So he did, she said, but offered the traveller no further line or rhyme, choosing the silence that the poet had advocated for a great mind. A silence that they maintained until a cocky trout grabbed for a fly that paused on the river's surface, not long-legged, but nonetheless alluring. Not paused in flight, alas for the trout, but tethered to a line, and wickedly hooked, a shortcut to the river's bank, and a sharp blow with a knobbed stick. Her fourth in an hour or so, and the largest, she told the traveller, as the sun slipped below the treetops, to sidle between the trunks. Would that be good for a late afternoon's work? Oh, yes. It is a great year for the trout. Would that be? he said, showing her his arms bitten to hell. Because the buggers have grown idle and fat on a surfeit of beasts like these, that have had a surfeit of me these last weeks. Oh, yes, tis a great year for the flies, too. And should she not be putting the calamine on his bites? She cast again. Was it the insects taking back the countryside, he wondered, now that they could breathe, with the calves not tearing around so many roads on account of the virus, the air so fresh to go with her man's long-legged silence? Oh, yes, she told him how when she would lie reading in her bed these nights, before she turned out the light, there swirled about her more legs than she could recall for years and years. Long legs and short, early moths too, a great feast for the spiders, for she was disinclined to brush the cobwebs away, and happy for nature to take its course. A man, said the traveller, who gave me a ride, told me that his car had become greatly splattered with the bugs this year. Tis all the same, how might you put it, the same phenomenon. Oh yes, she said, and they were quiet again for a while. Out of the corner of her eye, she noted that he was long-legged himself and straight. He gazed at her high cheekbones and the slim neck below her short black hair. She landed a fifth trout, a smaller, silvery thing. She held it up to the traveller. They say that freshwater fish is great for the mosquito bites. And would that be cooked in a little butter with pepper and a squeeze of lemon, he said. Oh yes. To her mind nothing could beat a squeeze for easing the itch. From a mile away, a church clock struck five. And your trout now, did he himself not write a verse that warns you not to catch six, for the old wives fear that the river will run dry, he said. How does it go? She laughed at the notion of such a poem, but perhaps it was one of the fishing ones. Should they look at his verses, those she kept by her bed? Until then she conceded to stop at five might be prudent. Fine five fish, a burden for a woman to bear. Would he carry them home for her? Oh yes. If they could go by Michael's bar and exchange a trout for a pound of butter and a lemon and a bottle of something that might go down well with the fish? Oh yes, she said, and we'll want something afterwards. <laughs>